In this next lecture, we're going to give you a little tutorial on how to deal with the debt due to SARS. So what have we got so far? We've got that an assessment has been issued and that we may or may not have had litigation and the litigation or ADR has been concluded. We now have a valid claim from SARS. And the question is, what can SARS and the taxpayer do about it if the cash is not ready available to go and discharge the debt. Now, there are some very onerous provisions in the section of the Tax Administration Act dealing with taxpayer debt. And what these provisions are important about is that they don't only define the taxpayer, they also define the representative taxpayer. Now, when you are a director of a company or in charge of the financial affairs of a company, you can fall within that area of being representative taxpayer. And that leads on to the next set of provisions which create liability for representative taxpayers. So although a company can be a separate juristic personality, you have to be careful if you are running a company that you could land yourself in a lot of trouble by being a representative taxpayer. And then the provisions con continue. They say, a person can be personally liable if they are a representative taxpayer and the monies are not paid over to SARS and SARS could have been paid from those monies. So it is possible for SARS to pursue people who are in charge of money and don't make sure that it gets to SARS. This is particularly the case when one comes to VAT and employees tax. Those are taxes that you collect on behalf of SARS, where you're SARS's agent. And if you take that money, it's akin to theft. And SARS can get really angry when those monies are not paid over properly. So, what the Act says is that you must pay over your taxes when they are due in one lump sum. Where we don't pay the full amount of tax, well then recovery has to be considered by SARS, but the Act immediately recognizes that there are circumstances where the amount simply cannot be recovered. And now we have to pursue with caution. Now, the tax must be paid in the place notified by SARS, and you can go in a single amount, or you can apply for an installment. Now, if you don't do either, if you just leave the debt there, SARS is able to approach the High Court and ask for a preservation order of your assets. That means you can't just get rid of them. They can ultimately be sold off to defray your tax debt. That's quite frightening. Then there are other cases where people say, yes, on assessment I owe SARS the money, but I'm intending to dispute the assessment. I want to take it through the objection and appeal procedure. Now, what is important about that? is that tax works on a basis of pay now, argue later. So you can't presume that simply because you have lodged an objection to a tax matter that you don't have to pay the amount. A senior sales official on request from the taxpayer can ask that the amount be put on deferment until the litigation is completed. So there we have the provision which says you can go ahead in terms of Section 164 and get a SARS officer to defer the payment. But the SARS officer will not automatically do that. What they will do is that they will look at your history as a taxpayer and they will look at the case. If the case is frivolous or there is no case or your taxpayers are not, your tax affairs are not up to date, then SARS is entitled to say, no, 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 we are not giving you a deferment. The deferment is only deferring the inevitable. We want payment now, even though you intend to litigate the assessment. So, we can enter into an installment sale agreement with SARS, and they will say to you, yes, you're given a period of time to pay it off. They'll look at your tax affairs and they'll see that you are of good standing first. SARS can terminate an instalment arrangement if the taxpayer doesn't comply with it. It's very important that once you get instalment terms, that you keep to those instalments. 
If you're going to miss those installments, well then you must go back to the senior tax officer and say, hey, I'm not going to make it this month. I need another deferment. If your tax affairs are in good order, they'll humor you. What they don't like is where people take extensions from SARS and they don't keep to those extension terms. Right, now some people think that they can get away with their taxes by immigrating. Leave South Africa for a couple of years, come back and all will be forgotten. Now, what you see with this is that actually a tax debt doesn't prescribe until you've been out of the country for 15 years. So we've seen people, literally, who've left the country for 10 years and come back to a lovely big tax debt with interest. Right, so if you fail to pay your assessment on time, you've got 10 days to do it. After that, SARS can start pursuing the taxpayer. And they can also go to a third party to collect your tax debts. This is where one talks about garnishy orders. And a lot of people have been hit with garnishy orders from SARS. In fact, it's got so controversial that SARS has had to soften its stance on this. And now that provision has been extended to say that SARS must be able to show that they have given the taxpayer at least 10 days notice of their intention to take a garnishy order before they can actually take a garnishy order. So what happens with the garnishy order? SARS will take that order and it will go to the, person, the taxpayer's employer and say deduct a certain amount every month. You're far better off to go to SARS and arrange installments rather than start, SARS nominate the installments in terms of a garnishy order. Now, watch out for this if you are in a management position. If you are in control of the finances of a company and the company does not pay over its taxes, particularly VAT and employees tax, then you can be held personally liable if you were negligent in, or fraudulent in doing so. So you can't take a company's money and say, oh my goodness, I've got my creditors down my back this month. I'm not going to pay SARS. Instead, I'm going to go and pay my creditors off to get me a breather. You can't use SARS as a bank. That's a very dangerous thing to do if you are in a financial management position. Even shareholders can, in certain circumstances, be liable for the debts of a company. Now, what a lot of companies do is that they realize that they're getting into trouble. So they raid the company, they take all the cash out, leave the SARS debts there. Now, what there is in Section 181 of the Act is a right of recovery against the shareholders. Within one year, if they find that the money was taken out within a year of the company being liquidated or wound up, and it was your intention not to pay SARS, then they can visit the shareholders and get that money back. We can also have liabilities of transferees, people who have received assets, knowing that there's going to be a liquidation of a company and lost to creditors. SARS has got a provision there, Section 182, to do something about it. Furthermore, you've got to be careful when you're advising a company. I'm a tax advisor. If I now go along and I say to a company, now look, you're going to go and solve it. Raid the piggy bank quickly. Take all the money out and leave the debt there for SARS to pursue. And the company follows that advice that I gave in my professional capacity. I can be laid, held liable for those tax debts. Then there is the question of interest. Now, in the old days, SARS was given wide latitude to waive interest charges. That's been tightened down now. So if there is a tax debt today, there's going to be interest charged on it. That's going to be very expensive. And SARS has only the most exceptional circumstances where they can say to you, look, we're going to waive interest. This is very important when it comes to litigation. When you litigate a matter, if you ultimately lose the case, you're going to pay the interest going all the way back to when that tax was assessed. And when these cases go on for 7 to 10 years, the interest can be as much as the original tax bill. So you mustn't think that simply because SARS has granted a deferment or been nice in some or other way, that the interest block is not running.
Right, so we've got an assessment issued and we have to look at what happens. There are very, very tough terms with regard to recovery. So far, we've basically looked at an extension. But an extension doesn't get you around the payment of the actual tax debt or the payment of interest. That is where we have to go to other provisions within the Tax Administration Act to see if they can help. And these are the provisions relating to write-off or compromise of tax debts. They're relatively new. In the old days, government authorities were not allowed to compromise with taxpayers. Now the Tax Act is recognizing that sometimes the strictness and rigidity of the Act should be tempered. And there is simply no point in SARS liquidating companies, costing people their jobs, and then getting nothing. So they've got a special chapter that allows SARS in certain circumstances to come to the party. But these are pretty specific circumstances. First of all, we have the temporary write-off of a tax debt. Now, a temporary write-off of a tax debt doesn't really help anybody because SARS is simply going to come back another day. So a temporary write-off is really akin to a deferment. There is also an authority for SARS to write off a tax debt if it's not economical to pursue it. They don't want to waste legal fees. But both of those provisions are not really going to help the taxpayer. The provision that you want is Section 197. That allows a senior SARS official to write off a tax debt. And people get excited then. But what you've got to have a look at is that the debt has to be first found to be irrecoverable. Then only can the senior SARS official come to your help and start talking about a compromise. So, uh, there are the provisions in section 198 which says you've got to show that the amount is irrecoverable. So it's no point in going to SARS and saying Please let me off some of my tax debt. I'm really in a tough position at the moment. Um, you've really got to demonstrate that to SARS. A very good way of demonstrating this is to put the company into business rescue provisions in terms of the Companies Act. Because there you're making a statement, I am financially distressed and SARS has to come along. Right, so now a SARS official can authorize a compromise. but as always in tax matters, there are bells and whistles attached to this. We have to have a request from the debtor for a compromise of what we are doing. Now, this is very important. Your chances of getting a compromise with SARS are really as good as your presentation to SARS. So what's normally a good idea is to put the company into business rescue. That shows that you are financially distressed. Then we get the business rescue practitioner in who is an independent person and a professional at what he does. And he makes up a presentation to SARS, firstly, to demonstrate to SARS that the amount is irrecoverable, and then to propose a compromise that might be attractive to SARS. That's done in terms of Section 201. But 202 and 203 have some little caveats to them. We cannot compromise if the tax affairs of the company are not up to date. Now, so often what happens with companies that get financially distressed is that their books and records are allowed to get into a state of disrepair. If that's the case, then you are precluded from a compromise because you can't present your true position to SARS. So it's very important that if your company is going in the wrong direction, You've got to be able to keep proper books and records if there's to be any prospect of SARS coming to the party. So, right, we can then have a compromise provided that this is not followed by the initiation of a liquidation or sequestration proceeding by other creditors. SARS simply won't get involved in a compromise offer unless you've got the agreement of all creditors. This is, again, a very good reason to go into a business rescue position because then you can get all creditors together. And you can say, if you are all prepared to come along, then SARS will come along. If one of you steps out of line and says, no, I want to go for liquidation, well, then you're not going to get a compromise from SARS. 
So I was also has to consider whether it would be better off to actually go for a liquidation or sequestration. Now, that is up to the business rescue practitioner to show to SARS that if there is a liquidation or sequestration, it is more likely that SARS will become a contributing creditor than get any financial benefit from it. So this is again a good reason why we have to have the practitioner along to show that it is in everybody's best interest. Then, once we come to an agreement on a compromise, we have to have a signed agreement with a senior SARS officer. And that will be binding unless there has been a failure to disclose material facts relating to the issue. Or, if the taxpayer following signing a compromise offer has not kept to the deal, then the deal is put aside and probably liquidation would proceed. So what we're saying is, the Tax Act has some very onerous provisions once a debt is established. The worst thing that you could do is ignore that debt. Once you've got an assessment with a number on it, you've got to do something about it. If you're unhappy with it, and you say SARS has determined the amount incorrectly, then you go the objection and appeal procedure. However, if you are a dead duck and you cannot actually dispute the assessment, is all you can do then is line yourself up so that you present your case properly towards getting a compromise arrangement with SARS. But as I've said many times before in this presentation, the last thing that you want to do is actually ignore SARS because they have, then can throw the wrath of the Tax Administration Act clearly on your lap. More to come.